So it is a pleasure to have with us today Professor Shunhozumi from Japan, from Siga University. Uh, for those that you are not in galactic dynamics, Shun is a well-known person in uh, studies about uh, uh, instabilities in disks. And he has uh, a long series of papers about on you know, this subject and their relation with black holes at the centers of, uh, of the disks and uh, how the structures evolved. And as you see, the title of the, of the talk today is about uh, the origin of bar properties. So what structures we observe at uh, the images of galaxies on, on the origin of the structures when the bar instability is introduced in flat stellar disks. So this is the subject. And uh, soon you you may start immediately. So you have as much time as you want. And don't. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. A short uh, discussion will follow. So. Okay. Okay. So I'll start my talk. So I'm Shun Hozumi. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the origin of the bar properties generated by bar instability in flat star disks. So flat star disks means zero thickness disks. So I. Uh, I don't mention three-dimensional disks, so uh, don't be disappointed at this uh, model, but uh, I'll show how the uh, bar, pro uh, bar properties are generated. Oops. So first, I'll show the observation of both galaxies. So uh, first, I'll show the fraction of bad galaxies like this, and uh, Around the e, uh, half sequence, uh, there are many kinds of bad galaxies, but the uh, for each um, uh, classification, so you can see uh, the uh, the uh, sister is a half sequence, and the ordinate shows the fraction of bad galaxies. So solid line uh, represent the fraction of strong blood and dust lines uh, represent the uh, strong and weak blood. You can see uh, almost two thirds of these galaxies are blood. So uh, there are so many blood galaxies in the universe. Um, next, the, this fraction is uh, evolved or not. So, uh, now, uh, there is no definite conclusion, I think, uh, but the Chess et al. and Melvin et al. showed the bar fraction increases uh, with time uh, from the past to the present. On the other hand, Erwin Green et al. and Simon show um, the bar fraction doesn't increase, uh, just constant. For example, Simon uh, demonstrated uh, as long as the red shift is between uh, 2 and 0.5, the bar fraction is constant. Shown here, uh, at any rate, uh, many disk galaxies show uh, bar structures. Then, how significant is bar? that affect the disk evolution. So first, the uh, bar is very, um, uh, very extract angular momentum from the gas effectively, and the extracted gas uh, flows along the bar into the center of the disk. Then there might be a supermassive drop called there. So some activities are uh, ex uh, excited so the bar drives central activities by fueling the gas into the nucleus. And also the transfer of disk angular momentum to the halo excites the uh, strong bar by wave particle resonances. Uh, in this way, the bar drives the secular evolution of the disk through a angular momentum redistribution. However, the details of angular momentum transfer depends on the bar properties, uh, such as strength, I mean, amplitude, length, 
and electricity, uh, that means uh, access ratio of the bar. So I show the bar properties one by one. By one. First, uh, for the bar length, you can see uh, these figures are uh, created by a wing, so uh, the left bar. So a uh, left panel shows the bar length uh, normalized by the uh, 25th magnitude radius against the hub types. The right panel shows the bar length normalized by the scale length of the exponential disk uh, at mid rate. So the important thing is uh, from SBA to SBC or SBD around the half sequence, the bar length uh, becomes shorter. So, uh, both in S0, SB galaxies are longer than both in SC, uh, SD galaxies. Uh, that means the half sequence is decreasing sequence of the bar length. Next, the uh, concerning the bar electricity. So, uh, this figure shows the um, the our sister is the bar length. On the other hand, the ordinate shows the bar electricity, but electricity is defined by this equation, one minus b over a. Uh, b is the minor x, and a is the large, uh, major x of the bar. So in this figure, uh, some uh, subsamples are shown here, but the important thing is, um, as the bar length uh, increases the bar electricity also increases. This means the uh, larger bar electricity means more, the bar is more elongated. So the longer bars are more elongated. That is the half sequence is a decreasing sequence of the bar electricity. Finally, uh, concerning the bar amplitude, uh, this figure shows the bar amplitude against the bar length, uh, the, the bar radius. Uh, this portion uh, is constructed by Elmer Green et al. So the important thing is longer bars have a larger bar amplitude. That is the half sequence is a decreasing sequence of the bar amplitude. Uh, in summary, uh, from the uh, observations, the length decreases and the FTC decreases as the bar amplitude decreases like uh, this and this, and the bar length is connected to the uh, half sequence, so the bar becomes shorter, rounder, and weaker from SBA to SBC or SBD around the half sequence. So uh, we have to explain why these properties are uh, created. So next, I'll show the numerical studies of these galaxies. So uh, there is a long history of n body simulations for star disks and uh, gas, uh, gas disks. The first, um, in 1970s, uh, their thickness disks are simulated. So, um, uh, all the disks, so first, uh, the models are constructed with the axisymmetric disks. So, uh, such disks are deformed into bars in a dynamical time. Uh, uh, this change from axisymmetric to the bar it's called the bar instability. So, but uh, uh, at that time, uh, the, uh, the cause of the bar instability was unknown, uh, still unknown now. Then, uh, of course, we know there are many numbered galaxies in the universe. So, uh, the, the central issue was how to stabilize stellar disks against power formation. Uh, one solution is the addition of a massive halo. 
and Australian Economic Peoples uh, summarizes the criterion from end body simulations uh, like this. Uh, rotational energy divided by gravitational energy should be uh, less than 0.14, then the disks are stabilized. On the other hand, if Tassio et al. Uh, found this kind of stability criteria, uh, the important thing is uh, these criteria are based on empirical argument. So we don't know the origin of the bar instability. Uh, we don't know the origin. Uh, we don't still uh, know the origin of the bar instability. But the but instability itself is a uh, real because the as uh, time goes on, uh, the number of particles is increasing. Uh, for example, uh, Davinsky et al. showed the bar instability uh, by changing the number of particles. So even though uh, 18, uh, 18 million particles are used, the bar instability occurred. So uh, probably the but instability is real instability. Unfortunately, we don't know uh, the part of the bar instability. And the other important thing is found by real assumption like this. So if the halo is fixed, then the disk needs stabilized to the end of the simulation. On the other hand, if the same halo is made self-gravitating, then finally the large amplitude bar is excited like this. So uh, some uh, resonant interaction between the bar mode in the disk and halo particles excite the bar. So uh, this is a great um, discovery, I think. So. Uh, Previously, the halo can stabilize the disk, but uh, now the halo can destabilize the disk. Anyway, the bar instability is a real instability. And also the, uh, these are the uh, observation and the numerical simulation. So uh, uh, many uh, bar galaxies show uh, uh, such kind of boxy, peanut-shaped or egg-shaped bodies. So, for example, MVC-128 showed the peanut-shaped uh, body uh, viewing from the edge on, and the, uh, this is the inclination angle, uh, about 60 degrees. So you can see the uh, boxy bodies in the disk, and uh, MZC 6722 showed the X-shaped about, and uh, this, is, this is from the end body simulation. So uh, in the end body simulation, uh, first uh, the bar instability occurred, and the produced bar uh, suffered the bar buckling. Then uh, this kind of uh, boxy, peanut-shaped or X-shaped bulges are produced. So uh, the similarity of observed and the simulated uh, bulges uh, from uh, these results. So we now believe the bar instability is a real instability. So uh, go back to uh, two-dimensional disks. So two-dimensional disks have a long series of globally unstable modes in, um, uh, they have a long series of globally unstable modes. So in general, I don't know the reason, two arms modes are the most unstable. <laughs> So the dominant, uh, I mean, fastest growing to armed mode emerged by overwhelming other to armed mode, unstable mode. So the fate of this uh, dominant to armed mode is the bar. So uh, this simulation showed the 
uh, fate of the dominant armed mode. So first, uh, on the uh, axisymmetric disk, the uh, linearly uh, unstable global two armed mode is imposed. Then uh, this perturbation grows, and finally, uh, large bar is formed. So the fate of the dominant uh, mode is a bar. Uh, this means the properties of a bar uh, formed by the bar instability would be taken over from those of the dominant to armed mode. However, systematic study on bar properties generated by the bar instability. Um, I, I don't know the systematic studies on the property generated by the bar instability. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know uh, the uh, studies that show the relation between linear two armed mode and resulting bars. So now we don't know the relation between the linear two armed mode and the resulting bars. So I, I want to uh, examine uh, the relation between the linear active mode and the resulting bars. So the uh, purpose of the problem work is shown here. Uh, what is the origin of the bar properties generated by bar instability? And next, uh, what does the upper sequence represent? Uh, these are investigated on the basis of the most linearly unstable uh, global two arm mode of flat strut disks. Uh, why I use uh, flat strut disks? Because um, recently, uh, computer facility is progressed, so uh, we can use a huge number of particles, but the three dimensional disks have no um, definite. Uh, exact equilibrium distribution function. That is why I uh, use uh, flat strut disks at the first step to know the origin of the body properties. So I'll show my work here. So outline of the present work is shown here. So first I construct models uh, two dimensional um, too many disks uh, with exact equilibrium distribution functions. Uh, the the distribution functions are constructed using Carnot DF and Miyamoto DF. So, in the linear resume, I um, performed model calculations using the linearized collision with bottom equation. Then I uh, obtain the fastest growing two arms modes. From these, these modes, I would get the growth rate and pattern speed of each mode. On the other hand, I carry out n body simulation uh, using a self consistent field method. Then uh, I can investigate or examine the bar instability because the bar instability is a nonlinear uh, event. So uh, finally, uh, produced bar there is the one uh, that uh, the amplitude, length, and acceleration. Then uh, the comparison between the uh, properties of the unstable mode and the bar uh, produced by bar instability. Then, uh, what some of the bar properties are investigated. So, the key parameter is tum Q, the tum Q parameter. So, uh, many people know uh, what the tum Q parameter is, but uh, this is very important uh, to my investigation here. So, uh, let me show the uh, what the tumbler Q parameter is. So uh, 
this is the shearing part taken from the uh, galaxy disk. So uh, this portion is a little bit higher density and with the wavelength of uh, lambda. And of course, uh, this part is differentially rotating. So um, if the, uh, for short wavelength perturbations, uh, this term uh, is the uh, dispersive time scale by the velocity dispersion. This time scale is uh, less than a free fall time. Then this perturbation uh, disappear, disappears. So uh, we can get uh, this relation. So uh, lambda, the uh, uh, part of the length is shorter than uh, this quantity. Uh, next, uh, for long wave perturbations, uh, the self gravity of this patch is shown here, and this term is centrifugal forces. So, if the uh, gra gravitational force is less than uh, centrifugal force, then this perturbation needs stabilize. So from this relation, we can get um, this relation. So uh, this relation and this relation. So we can get a stability condition for all wavelength perturbations like this. So you can see this uh, figure. So if this uh, relation needs hold, the disk needs stabilized for all wavelength perturbations then uh, uh, this relation needs obtained. And the important thing is the angular speed is the uh, same order of the f cycle frequency because the, if the disk needs k area, so uh, angular speed is equal to the f cycle frequency. And other extreme case is the uh, uniform uh, uh, uniform rotating disk. So in this case, the angular speed is twice the epicyclic frequency. So uh, this is kappa and omega are the uh, same order with each other. So this is the Q parameter. And so if uh, Q is larger than a unity, that is needs stable. So um, from this argument, uh, Q parameter is only physically derived stability criterion for the disk. Uh, I showed the Oslaiker uh, people's criterion and so on, but they are uh, based on the empirical uh, fact. On the other hand, uh, this criterion is the physically derived. So that is why I think this uh, parameter is very important. So I'll show the uh, disk models. So disk models are flat tumor disks with a bounded halo. So uh, these disks are, uh, these disks uh, do not correspond to real uh, disks in the universe. Uh, such density is shown here and the place is shown here. So uh, you can see the uh, tumor disk is a little bit different from the exponential disk. Uh, that is the uh, disk uh, observed in the real universe. But uh, the uh, properties uh, obtained from uh, these models are not so different from the realistic uh, dot of the exponential disk, I think. So that's why I use the two disks. In addition, uh, these disks have the exact equilibrium distribution function, uh, like this and this. So uh, they are very complicated. So it's not so important. The important thing is uh, they are the model parameter for each distribution function. So this model parameter is related to the velocity structure of the disk, uh, that is the Q value. Uh, and uh, literal results are 
uh, introduced into uh, the way shown here. So uh, half the distribution function determined by energy only is assigned to the uh, retrograde stars. Then the Q profiles are shown here. So the model parameter means two, three, four, five for Miyamoto distribution functions and from six to 10 uh, for cardinal distribution function. So you can see uh, Q values are uh, increasing with radius for Miyamoto disk uh, uh, distribution function. On the other hand, if Carnot distribution functions are used, the Q values are almost constant uh, with radius. So uh, basically, these models are uh, st stable. Uh, almost already, I, uh, Q is larger than one, but uh, for uh, these two models, uh, in the middle radii, so Q is less than one. So from these models first, I will find the, uh, I'll find the uh, most linearly unstable global two angles. So, I carry out linear model calculation like this. So first, uh, solve the linearized collision sport one equation as an uh, initial value problem for two arm modes. The uh, linearized collision sport one equation is shown here. Um, Fm and phi m are the m Fourier components of the part of, part of the distribution function. So, um, so we can uh, we continue integrating this equation with re respect to time until the part of uh, until <clears throat> an important perturbation has reached exponentially growing phases in Fm. Then uh, the most linearly unstable global two arms modes are obtained. I call uh, this mode at uh, the uh, M Lagutan. Uh, this name is so, not so good, but I didn't come up with a suitable one. So the M Lagutan, uh, I would uh, call it uh, just unstable mode. So unstable mode or unstable global mode. Uh, this mode is characterized by the eigenvalue. So real part of the eigenvalue is connected to the uh, represent the pattern speed. On the other hand, imaginary part represents the growth rate of the unstable mode. And the you can see uh, in this equation, no gravitational softening is included. I just um, uh, so uh, the purely Newtonian force field is used in this uh, equation. So uh, to investigate the bar instability, I carry out in-body simulations uh, with the self-consistent field method. Uh, this method uh, consists of uh, solving the Poisson equation by expanding the density and the potential of the system in a set of by orthogonal this function. So given the uh, basis set, uh, density basis function and potential basis function, uh, these functions satisfy the Poisson equation and uh, satisfy the by normality. Then the surface density and the potential of the system are expanded uh, by the uh, density basis functions and potential basis functions. And A and M are the expansion coefficient. And using these uh, expansion coefficient, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 
this function. So the acceleration is calculated by this equation. Uh, just a uh, differentiated potential uh, with respect to the uh, position vector. And this uh, gradient can be uh, calculated in advance once the base set is given. And the important thing is, uh, in this method, no gravitational softening is included. That's why uh, I can compare the results uh, between uh, this method and the uh, linear model calculation. So, uh, SF simulation is carried out like this, um, given the basis set and the density and the potential R is expanded by these base functions. So, uh, given the particle distribution at time t, so operating the potential basis function to the density distribution, then uh, expansion coefficients are obtained by this equation. And so, uh, using the expansion coefficient, uh, the accelerations are obtained like this. And this uh, term is uh, calculated in advance uh, what the base set is given. So using a suitable integration scheme, uh, each particle is um, forward in uh, time by delta t, and this procedure is repeated again and again, then the, the SF simulation is completed. So for the SF simulation, I use Aoki, Aoki and the ES based set because the lowest order member functions are the two disks. And the number of radial expansion, uh, expansion terms are 24. The number of adimensional expansion terms uh, uh, is 12, with even m terms are uh, only even m terms are used because the, it is easy to extract bug uh, using even terms. The number of uh, particles is 10 million, and the disk is uh, cut off at 10 times the scale length. Uh, Contestant units are shown here, and the time step is like this. So I'll show the results. Oh, <laughs> so uh, these are the results of the uh, linear model calculation. So uh, this figure shows the growth rate and the pattern speed. And the uh, open symbols are the results using the SGF simulation. Uh, the field symbols are the result uh, from the collision, uh, linearized collision Boltzmann equation. And the, uh, these figures show the time evolution of the bars. So uh, in early phases, so the amplitude increases uh, exponentially uh, from uh, the gradient. Uh, I can get growth rate. And the, uh, sorry, uh, oops, uh, bar amplitude is uh, calculated from the function coefficient. And the uh, pattern speed is also calculated from the uh, expansion coefficient. Uh, I don't uh, show this. But the important thing is this figure. So you can see uh, the growth rate and pattern speed are um, very close to each other between the linear model analysis and the end body simulation. This means the uh, for the end body simulation the emerging pattern is the most unstable mode. So uh, for the SCF simulation, uh, there is no perturbation. Uh, the pattern comes from the Poisson noise. So uh, if the 
anybody simulation of the arc carried out the part, uh, the most linearly unstable global two and more appear. Uh, uh, that is the important thing. So uh, this is the uh, linear mode. The two arm pattern are shown here, and the, you can see some correlation between the uh, properties of the pattern and the, the Q values. Anyway, uh, the answer mode obtained from linear model calculation emerging in body simulation. So uh, that's why the properties of the uh, most active mode are related to the uh, properties of the part, I think. So uh, these are from the linear model calculation. Uh, these are uh, obtained from the end-body stimulation. So uh, some colors can be found. Uh, first, uh, I will show the time evolution of our amplitude. So you can see so, uh, from uh, 10 to 6, the Q value is increasing, but the uh, if the uh, Q is small, the disk needs unstable so that the growth rate is uh, larger. But uh, after the bar forms, the bar amplitude is larger and the Q value is larger. So <clears throat> the final bar amplitude is related to the initial Q value. Uh, this shows the pattern speed of the bar. So, uh, cumulative Q is larger, the resulting bar pattern speed becomes lower. So, larger Q uh, forms the uh, slower bar. Now, uh, let's look at the bar properties. The first, uh, Bar range is correlated with the bar amplitude uh, from the SCF simulation. You can see uh, the bar amplitude increases, the bar length increases like this. And also I indicate the tendency of the Q values shown here. Uh, on the other hand, bar axis ratio is also correlated with bar amplitude like this. As the bar amplitude increases, the bar uh, axis ratio uh, decreases. That means the uh, more elongated bar there are formed with increasing bar amplitude. Next, and uh, I will show the uh, correlation between the growth rate of the uh, unstable modes and the Q values. Uh, Q value is calculated at the scale length of the disk. So uh, you can see as Q increases, the growth rate decreases because the uh, disk needs stabilized with increasing Q. But uh, important thing is the growth rate and Q values are very uh, well correlated. And the pattern speed is also correlated with the Q value uh, because the growth rate and pattern speed are correlated with each other. That is why uh, growth rate and pattern speed are correlated with the Q value at the scale length. And I've compared the properties of the bar and the properties of the uh, unstable mode. So as uh, the growth rate increases, the bar amplitude decreases. Uh, I'll show the reason later. And the, <clears throat> uh, as the pattern speed in, of the unstable mode increases, the bar pattern speed also increases. Next, um, 
this shows the uh, correlation between the bar amplitude and the bar length. So as uh, the bar uh, amplitude increases, the bar length also increases. On the other hand, uh, uh, the bar amplitude increases, but X ratio decreases. So uh, the, the bar needs more elongated. Then the bar length and bar amplitude are correlated with the bar amplitude. So in summary, um, all the bar properties are uh, all the properties that arise from the initial field value. So you can see the uh, bar amplitude is correlated with the field value. Uh, also, the bar length is correlated with the Q value. The finally, axis ratio is also correlated with the Q value. So, all the bar properties are determined by the uh, Q value. So, uh, first, I will show why um, Q and the, the length of the uh, bar are correlated. So um, first, as uh, Q uh, is smaller, then the pattern speed uh, becomes larger. So uh, larger pattern speed is uh, mean the larger bar pattern speed because the, the, uh, the pattern speed of the uh, answer more than the pattern speed of the bar is correlated like this. So, and the uh, larger pattern speed means smaller core rotation radius. Uh, smaller core rotation radius means a shorter bar because the bar supporting orbit do not exist beyond the core rotation uh, of the bar. Uh, so uh, in summary, smaller Q uh, leads to shorter bar. And uh, this uh, relation is uh, shown by uh, from the observation like this. So, uh, Cuomo et al. showed the uh, core rotation of the bar and the bar radius. So, you can see as uh, the core rotation increases, bar radius increases like this. Uh, so, uh, Q determines the bar length. Uh, next, uh, why Q and P are correlated with each other? Uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, quantitative, uh, not uh, qualitative, not quantitative. So, uh, from the dispersion relation of a uh, uh, gas disk for a mouse mode, uh, the dispersion relation is shown here. So, uh, if the mode is unstable, the most unstable wave number is. Uh, calculated like this, and the, the uh, wave uh, wave number is is transferred to the wavelengths. So uh, the most unstable wavelengths is related to uh, the Q value of the disk like this, and the uh, the model are similar disks, uh, even though the distribution functions are different. So uh, Tough density and the epicyclic frequency are the same. Uh, the, the difference is the Q value of the disk. So, uh, if the Q uh, value uh, is larger, then the unstable wavelength becomes larger. This means the uh, pitch angle increases with increasing Q, uh, shown like this. Uh, so pitch angle is uh, calculated in this equation. And so uh, this figure shows uh, the, uh, the angle is uh, progressed by radians. So the uh, arm is next uh, radius. So uh, the pitch angle is uh, calculated like this. So, uh, if 
uh, as fuel increases, uh, cotangent uh, inclination decreases, so the pitchang increases. So uh, uh, as Q is larger, the unstable uh, mode shows more open spirals. Um, then, uh, in fact, uh, from the uh, linear model calculations, uh, as Q value is uh, decreasing or increasing, the pattern shows uh, more open spirals. So, uh, <clears throat> if the uh, spiral is more open, the deviation of the force field from the axis symmetry is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, deviation of the force field from the X symmetry is considered smaller for a tightly wrapped spiral than for a loosely wrapped one. So open spiral would be violently uh, deformed into the bar. A more tightly wrapped spiral could result in a, a less violent change in the force field along the azimuth direction when the bar instability occurred. So uh, produced bar uh, could be rounder as the uh, M lag term is more tightly wrapped. Smaller Q results in more uh, smaller electricity uh, that is rounder bar shown here. And why uh, Q uh, value and the uh, amplitude are correlated? So uh, smaller Q leads to more tightly wrapped spiral. A uh, more tightly wrapped spiral is confined in a smaller region. And so a uh, more confined two armed pattern could be considered formidable to provide gravitational influences further away. So a uh, bar produced by a more confined unstable mode would result in a lower amplitude owing to the difficulty in attracting many more masses in the bar. So the bar amplitude decreases with decreasing Q. Uh, that is it, uh, explanation. So summary of the relation between the unstable mode and the bar. So colder discs show more tightly wrapped uh, to unstable mode and higher pattern speed and higher growth rate. So more tightly wrapped means a uh, lambda shape in bar, and higher pattern speed means smaller core rotation radius, then the bar becomes shorter. And uh, tightly wrapped and the higher pattern speed uh, produces a lower amplitude bar, probably. So, <clears throat> The, I'll summarize my results. The amplitude length and the FTC of the bar are determined by the similar Q value at the scale length of the initial disk. So uh, the bar properties uh, are, uh, all bar properties are explained by this uh, Q value. Uh, that is why the of the sequence for bar galaxies could be the sequence of the decreasing Q from uh, this uh, SBA to SBC or SBD. So, uh, but uh, I obtained the result from the two dimensional disk. If the disk uh, needs constructed for three dimensional disk, so uh, some difference would change the result uh, first. Uh, I showed earlier, so bar halo interactions when the self-gravitating halo is in, introduced. So uh, some um, uh, bar halo interactions can excite larger amplitude bar. So uh, the bar amplitude would not be determined only by Q value. And also angular momentum transfer from the disk to the halo. Uh, this uh, produces uh, lower bar pattern speed. So uh, the length of the bar would not be determined only by Q. So uh, my um, results are uh, probably 
uh, would be changed if we use a three-dimensional disk. So uh, this is the preliminary result for three-dimensional disks. Uh, so it, I use the exponential disk and uh, NFW halo. So you can see as Q increases, the bar length increases, uh, but the bar amplitude, uh, all the bar amplitudes are the same, and the pattern speed is not so uh, different between the models. So uh, this is very preliminary, but the, uh, at least the bar lengths are uh, increasing with increasing Q. So this is very uh, preliminary. So uh, my conclusions are uh, shown here. So uh, the growing feature in the early phases of the DSQ growth is the most linearly unstable global to armed mode. This two armed mode is deformed in the bar by the bias beta. The resulting bars obtained with SHF simulations show the correlations of the audio in real bad gas. The length increases, the FTC increases as the Amplitude increases. The uh, correlations found in the simulated bars are closely connected to the eigenvalue of the uh, unstable mode. Uh, the eigenvalue of the unstable mode is well correlated with the initial Q value at a scale length of this. So the typical Q value is a determ uh, determinant of the bar properties. And the uh, for the half sequence, uh, this sequence for bad galaxies might be the sequence of this uh, increasing uh, Q from SB8 to SBC or SBD. Uh, that is, thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Domo arigato <laughs> gozaimashita. Ah, you, you know Japanese. So thank you, uh, thank you very, very uh, I'm sorry. That uh, you have shown us. Uh, I'm personally very interested in what you have shown because uh, uh, the project I was telling you that I have the collaboration with Torsten Garching has the models that come from a, a spiral to a bar face, and then uh, actually I'm trying to find ways. Uh, and sometimes I think I can done it to delay the bar instability. But okay. Let's see if first if there is some question in the audience here. Yes, speak up so that. Uh, yeah. How is the bar instability here in the galaxies related to with the bar instability that we see in the rotating stars? Ah, okay. So have you heard the question? I can repeat it. If there is any or how, if you can make a comment about bar instabilities in galactic disks and bar instabilities that are observed around stars in in uh, protostellar disks etc is that the question neutron stars, neutron stars whatever have you any idea if there are some relations between these properties uh, in uh, another scale sorry uh, uh, could you re repeat it a little bit slowly if there are some uh, similarities uh, in bar instabilities that we have in uh, galactic disks and bars that are observed in disks around stars. Uh, is the same physics or the same properties? Have you any idea about how this could evolve? There are some similarities. For, for example, the frequencies, the, t the ratio T of Ws and things like that. Have you heard that the frequencies T, T over Ws, etc. Well, the, the, the overall, the, 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 the overall uh, let's say, picture of the question is if there are similarities between, but if bar instabilities carry the same properties in different scales. And, and regarding the tumor parameter, since this is... Uh, Characterizing also the self gravity of the disk. If we you know, go to that limit, we, we can approach the results that we find in self gravity in bodies. Okay, if the Q parameter uh, 
well, brings the same consequences in different self-gravitating bodies, because now we have to speak about different scales between a stellar scale uh, and the galaxy scale. So the bar properties, do you expect to be the same in different scales? Let me formulate like that. Uh, what, what, what the different scale means? The, the scale is if you have a galactic disk and a mm -hmm. very smaller disk that has, it is uh, at the center is a star and there you have a protostellar disk or something like that. And then you have again some bar formation that happens in that case. Even for a single star without a disk, where Even yeah, without a without a disk around it. If you have formation. a star, and then you have a kind of uh, formation bar formation, so rotation. so that this is deformed. Let's say, exactly. if if a stellar body, a star, can due to rotation be transformed to an oval shape. Hmm. Can can you comment on that? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I I don't. Uh, cut up the discussion. So okay, okay, okay. So I I, I don't understand. I'm I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Let me give an example. When a star has t over w larger than point twenty seven, it deforms into a star. When it is just about into a bar. Into a bar. Yeah, yes. Into a bar. Yeah. I... Just a simple example. Yeah. And that is called dynamical instability versus the secular. There are dynamical stability in stars. This is that what Antonis Chokaros, our colleague, here asks. There are bar instabilities in stars. You know, like the the, the instabilities that are described in Chandra Shekhar's book, uh, etc., or what uh, Van der Voort was doing some years ago. Here we had some discussions. But okay, it's just if you have some idea of how things could evolve, it is not exactly the same, the same uh, uh, objects. Uh, if stars, what would be the conditions, the instabilities that a rotating star could deform to a oval shaped, a bar shaped object? Do you think uh -huh. that the physics are similar or some difference that you can think of? Mm. Okay, okay. It's an uh, okay, okay, okay. It's very difficult. Sorry. Okay, then there is one more question. How are the results uh, affected from the differential rotation law that it is assumed? Uh, how are the results affected from the rotation that it is assumed in the so we the have there is a differential, of course, rotation. Which has been taken, everything rotates differentially in the disks. But if you change that? Uh, if you have, let, let me formulate in the way we understand it in, uh, if we have different rotation curves, uh -huh. then we will yeah, but, uh, have uh, mega low, let's say. For uh, the so, how do things with different rotation curves? This is the question. Yeah, uh, I, I cannot say anything about that because the the models that I used are the same um, uh, density distribution. So the rotation curve is identical to uh, model to model, from model to model. So, uh, so uh, rotation curves change. That that means the uh, distribution of the disk need uh, different. So. Uh, um, it's very difficult to specify what, what determines the final uh, bars, I think. Okay. Well, it would be worth to do some experiments in cases that you have some very steep rising rotation curves that would indicate uh, a heavy bulge and how this would do trans this, this would be very, really very interesting. If you can repeat the same analysis, with, uh, I would be very interested to see if there is a heavy bulge. That means that it will be an uh -huh. a law then. Then the omega uh, of R of the star uh -huh. rotating would be much faster in the center, etc. This this would uh, cause uh, 
some difference and would be very interesting. Maybe it can suppress some instabilities in the center, I would guess. So this is my my feeling. Uh -huh. I see. Yeah. So uh, my model are stop disk, so uh, there are uh, so, so many constraints. <laughs> so yeah. I, I cannot say about three-dimensional disks. So, uh, uh, so my work is the first step to understand the bar properties. Yeah. And uh, as far as uh, as far as the two-dimensional disks, so the bar properties are determined by the uh, tumulate cube uh, value at the scale length of the initial disk. Yeah. So, uh, so in general, the general uh, picture is that you start with some linear modes that have a spiral structure. And uh, after that, the bar instability is introduced in the system and makes the bar and then reflects the properties of the linear modes, right? Yeah, right, right, right. I, I think, I think, uh, I think so. I have understood something correctly. Uh, you have the strong bars, which are the long bars. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the pattern speed of these bars? Because the, the picture I have in my mind is that the SB0, SBA galaxies, which are the strongest and longest bars, they have also corrotation very close to their ends. So they are uh -huh. as fast as they can rotate. A bar. So, as you said, the, due to orbital instabilities, it cannot be not uh, the the correlation cannot be inside the bar. So, but these objects have them at their limits. Is that consistent with your findings? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so uh, I think the bar limits. The, uh, uh, yeah. How can I say? Uh, and. For me, strong, uh, strong bars, SB0 bars, let's say, uh, are, uh, are associated with uh, a corrotation very close to their ends. Mm -hmm. That means that they are fast rotating. And I, I have a very concrete example in my mind, NGC 4314. It's a, a very known object that we have studied. And then we, you, hardly can push corrotation very far away from the bar. It's at the end of the bar. <laughs> so yes. it cannot mm. take faster than that. <laughs> it, yeah, so uh, uh, if this gets hot, so the, uh, I mean, the Q bar is larger, then the disk needs to stabilize. This means the, um, uh, the uh, pattern speed of the unsealed mode is very low. and in in this state, so uh, if this this speed deforms into a bar, the bar pattern speed is also low. Uh, that is why the co-rotation radius is very large. So a larger uh, bar would be created, I think. So uh, larger Q is connected to the pattern speed of the uh, unstable mode, then uh, connected to the bar pattern speed. So uh, the bar becomes larger. So uh, larger Q produces uh, la uh, larger Q produces a larger bar. Uh, I mean, lo longer bar. Longer bar. Okay. Okay. So there's one more question. Yes, I I, I would like to have a similar question like yours for the ratio of uh, the length of the bar to rotation if uh, uh, they have been shown any dependence on Q, the, the ratio of the correlation yeah. to the length of the bar. Okay, so this is the pattern there's... speed. So this is the pattern speed. Okay, but yes, well, if they have shown any okay. correlation. So of course, with, uh, the, the, this, like uh, this, one... this affects, of course, the, the, uh, the ratio between correlation radius and bar radius, because the pattern speed changes, right? Oh, yeah, right. Sure, yes. So there is a dependence on... Of course, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah, sure. Let me see if there is some question from people that are... So is there anyone who wants to ask a question from... Uh, Christos, 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 please, yes, go ahead. Hi, Shinsuke, nice to meet you, see you after so many years. Very, very interesting talk. 
Uh, I actually have three questions and two of them are related to the same fact. So essentially, I would say in what you presented, you can sign some things, attribute, let's say, some of the of the dependence, let's say, that you found on the linear theory and other ones to the non-linear, let's say, or embodied theory. So from the ones of the linear theory, I would say you have the dependence essentially of the eigenvalues on Q. And the second is the dependence of the real part of the imaginary part of the, let's say the real part of the eigenvalues on the imaginary and so on. So uh, as regards the first, I mean, if you make a naive analysis of the linearized Boltzmann equation, just from the derivative df, over the, let's say, in the dv, dv, the velocity, you just get sigma square in the denominator. So naively speaking, I would expect all the eigenvalues to go like one over the square root of Q or something. Is that confirmed in you? I mean, you, you showed that they they decrease with the value of Q, but was that a power law or something? I, I, didn't, I didn't notice in the diagrams. Oh. Sorry, uh, could you say it again? Yes, the dependence, let's say, of the omega pattern or the growth rate S on Q, is that a power law in, in let's say, with a negative exponent? And would that exponent be anything close to 0 0.5? Because if you make a quick, uh, uh, let's say... You well, mean these figures? Yeah, well, I see it's, but it's not 0 0.5, okay? It's neg it's negative, but the exponents are very different. So it seems that I, I, there's something, uh, I mean, linear theory should eventually be able to give you the eigenvalues. Let's say if you go back to the linearized Boltzmann equation, you should get the eigenvalues as a function of the parameters of the axisymmetric distribution function. Is that possible or not? I mean, you should have a. Th you could be able, probably, to have a theory for these plots. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I don't understand. Okay, let's say in that equation, the f over dt in the first, you, you this you put equal to zero, and then you just take the derivative over time. You get the eigenvalues times the, the, the distribution function are equal to a differential operator times the distribution function. I mean, this is the usual eigenvalue theory. So your eigenvalue should be related to the parameters of the axisymmetric model, including Q. I, yes, I'm of course. I am wondering whether there is any way to make that theory, work out that theory. I mean, you showed the plots by just running the linearized Boltzmann equation numerically, but is there any way to predict the dependence on Q analytically? Uh -huh. Analytically. Q. Well, I think someone has to to do that. So if it has not been done, it is not something that by I one can... Well, uh, let's say Kalnas, for example, I believe has done this eigenvalue analysis. Okay. So I don't know if it applies to all, every kind of model, but at least for Kalnas models, this theory somehow has been written, in my opinion. Anyway, well, that's one remark. Be, then you... It can be repeated and compared then. It's, it's... Exactly. Then you um, have the dependence that the, the real part grows as a power law of the imaginary part. Hmm. Again, it, could that be understood by some, let's say, quick and dirty theory? I mean, this is, a, uh, yeah, again, yeah. You, you solve numerically uh, the linearized Boltzmann equation, but is there any way to predict that that would be so? Why is that so? Yeah. It it's not easy to predict because the, this is that um i bet so we cannot predict any values for the eigenvalues um okay. just i uh, predict if the q value is larger so the growth rate uh, growth rate is decreased and the pattern speed increases so uh, that all all the uh, prediction. So um, 
Okay. Uh, from uh, model, model, what, what kind of uh, eigenvalues are obtained? We don't know what kind of uh, eigenvalues are obtained, I, I think. Did yeah, I... well, th this is a qualitative uh, argument for sure. I mean, if Q is larger, the disk is hotter and the growth rate is right. smaller. I mean, this, is, this yeah. is understandable. But I was wondering whether this can become more quantitative in any way. I mean, yeah, other than it's... just running the simulation. I don't think it's possible to predict because the uh, why did patterns appear? So we don't know the reason. Uh, uh, what what kind of uh, growth rate are obtained, or what kind of patterns are obtained? We cannot predict. Just ca calculate. All we can say is just the, the tendency of the eigenvalue. Uh, with the Q values and so on. So I cannot uh, tell you about the uh, uh, quantitative um, okay. discussion. Uh, yeah. Then my last question is, you said that the SCF has no softening. Yes. But, but there is a length introduced by the value of N max and N max. Uh -huh. Comment on that. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, 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 formally, uh, there is no um, softening length included in the SF simulation, but of course, uh, some cut of uh, 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 so, um, we have to. Uh, uh, so, uh, the, the number of expansion towns are uh, limited, so uh, some um, uh, implicit softening is included in uh, uh, SCF simulation, but no explicit uh, length is included, so that uh, formally a uh, Newtonian force field is uh, the of uh, interaction force uh, in the uh, SF simulation. So uh, if the explicit softening is included, so the force law is changed from Newtonian to uh, Pramonite for, uh, force. But uh, there is no explicit uh, softening in the SF method. That's why, um, That's why uh, you can see the agreement between the uh, linear model analysis and the SF simulations, I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, sorry, <laughs> my bad English. No, 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 it's absolutely fine. Thank you. Thank you. So let's see, let's check if there is anyone else who wants to ask something. I don't see any anyone else uh, where yeah. then, it's okay uh if i'm missing something then just please speak up if not okay it's so there are no more questions so soon thank you very very much again it was very very interesting that the talk and as i told you i hope that we soon meet uh, yeah, <laughs> Germany, and then I show you what I have, and then we may apply these uh, things to see if we agree, etc. It would be great. In any case, it was very nice to see you again. Yeah, th thank you for uh, giving me a, such a, a great opportunity to present my work today. So very I'm much. very happy. Yeah, yeah. Do, do, uh, okay, let me let me stop the recording here. This one. Thanks. Okay. And meeting for okay. So bye bye soon.